Okay, one of the more fun things about the uh, Unit 6 is this thing called Le Chatelier's Principle. You're going to do a really nice lab with this, and we're going to talk a little bit about how it works. So Le Chatelier basically said, if you have a reaction at equilibrium, such as this one, which is hydrogen plus nitrogen making ammonia, if we could get that thing going on in a sealed container and get it to achieve an equilibrium where the forward and reverse rates were equal, we would be able to talk about Le Chatelier and his idea. Basically his idea was that once you have this equilibrium and this sort of stable equilibrium place, if you jolt it or stress it somehow, that the reaction will attempt to get back to equilibrium. And that's maybe some common sense and all we're going to do is see uh, how, would the, how would that getting back to equilibrium look. So here's the reaction. You'll notice that it's exothermic because heat is written on the right side or produced. You can see that number from table I. If you go look there, that's where we got the number from. We drew a potential energy diagram to put it in visual terms. Again, it would be a diagram that looks like that, where the delta H is negative 91.8. In other words, there's less energy in the products than there are in the reactants. All right, now let's say that we are in lab. We have this equilibrium going on in a sealed container, and we come along, and all of a sudden we get out our big injection needle, and somehow we squirt in some more hydrogen gas. Well, think about that. What's that going to cause to happen? I now suddenly have more reactants. So, of course, the forward reaction is going to speed up a little bit in response to that and try and uh, use that extra hydrogen up. And so, in, uh, as a chemist, we would say that the reaction is going to shift to the right, and sometimes we just abbreviate that as SR. Shifts to the right, in other words, speeds up suddenly and instantaneously in the forward direction and then, of course, uh, eventually, you could think of this sort of like uh, a sloshing back and forth. It, it super speeds up in the forward direction, which causes the reverse to speed up a little bit. And then the forward uh, kind of gradually decelerates and then eventually kind of comes back to equilibrium. So it's like, whoa, 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 like that. And eventually, it'll come back to equilibrium. All right, there'll be more products and reactants in the mixture at this point, of course, because the hydrogen was added so there's more material in the equilibrium. Your task is to predict the initial shift though. Adding more reactant would cause it to shift in the forward direction to try to use up that reactant. Similarly, if we take some nitrogen out, reduce the concentration of nitrogen, the equilibrium will respond to try to replace that. The only way to replace nitrogen into the equilibrium is to do the reverse reaction to decompose some of the ammonia and bring it back this way. So in this case, we would say the reaction would respond by shifting to the left to try to replace the, ex the, the missing nitrogen. Uh, we could play this another way. Let's say we added some ammonia once we were at equilibrium. Again, there's no more material. The, the equilibrium will try to react to use up the extra material, and in this case would do that by shifting to the left again. There's more here. Got to come back the other way. All right. Uh, let's look at temperature. Temperature could be a stress. If I have this thing at equilibrium and increase the temperature, of course that's going to change the rates. Now, adding heat would favor more, would favor both directions, but it would more favor the direction that wants to use heat. Now, the forward direction is trying to dump heat. The reverse reaction, think about it going over the potential energy diagram this way, the reverse reaction is trying to gain heat. So increasing the temperature would would favor, we say, the, the endothermic direction, which in this case is the reverse. This is the direction trying to use heat. This is the direction trying to shed heat. So in this case, increasing the temperature would cause the reaction to shift to the left. Finally, pressure could affect the equilibrium if there's gases involved. Since this is an all-gas reaction, we would assume that a change in pressure would cause some sort of effect. And in this case, you want to think about your gas laws. Decreasing the pressure would in general allow gases to expand. And so in this case, we have four moles of gas on the reactant side and two moles of gas on the product side. Think about it this way then. The left side represents the expansion side of the equilibrium and the right side represents the compression side. So if I were to put more pressure on this equilibrium, it would force it into the smaller volume with fewer particles of gas fewer particles would occupy fewer, uh, less volume. Or if I decrease the pressure, it's going to go in a way where it can expand into more molecules, in this case to the left. So a decrease in pressure in this case would cause a shift to the left.